All right, guys. Well, yeah, we are back at it again. It is finally that time of year. Parts are starting to roll in for repairs and service. And this is going to be the first one of 2023 that we do. I can't even talk today. That we do a video on. Uh, so I want to say, first of all, I do apologize for not getting any videos out sooner. Uh, as most of you know, um, uh, we lost my dad last year in May. Uh, basically exactly one year from his surgeries that he had and all that stuff but um so it's been a it's been a pretty rough end half of the rest of uh, pretty rough half a year last year and a pretty rough year to start this year uh so i'm doing my best to get back at this i'm probably going to be a little rusty i'm going to be forgetting things lighting's probably going to suck camera angles are probably going to suck but just bear with me till i get back into my groove and hopefully we'll be able to, you know, come back to this and get everything going again. And unfortunately, my shop is also now a, in complete disarray because of everything we've been kind of going through and moving stuff around and putting it in here and moving it back. And yeah, it's been a, it's been a cluster cuss. Anybody that's lost anyone that has had a, a large number of possessions would know that it's tough. But um, enough of the sad stuff. We're going to just move on to this cart here. Uh, this is a... I had it all ready to go. What do we got here? 2004. 2004 EasyGo TXT gas, obviously. Uh, what we're going to be doing on this is a full service. So we're going to do oil change. We're going to check the filters, uh, check the spark plugs, adjust the valves. The engine is cold. I drove it in here a little while ago, and I just wanted to make sure it was cold. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the engine's cold. Uh, we're probably going to wash this cart, but we're going to take it over to storage and wash it because that's where the pressure washer is at the moment. Uh, what else? Uh, check the charging system, grease the front end, check the tires. Brakes, we got to adjust on this, and the brake pedal is kind of like something's not right with it. It's bouncing back down, which they normally don't do that. Usually they get stuck down. So we'll get underneath the cart. We'll see what's going on under there. We're probably going to have to tear that brake pedal apart. Uh, to clean everything on it um but on first inspection let's see let's go through everything brake the belts don't look too terrible i mean there is some checking on the belts uh it's loose we could adjust that this belt here is out of spec i could already tell by looking at it you can see that big giant gap between that and the clutch face is it usable sure i don't really think it needs to be replaced i mean it was done for 421 so almost just a couple of years ago so yeah, that's what we're going to kind of do. We'll get into it. Uh, the customer with this cart was also complaining of a loud noise. Uh, I'm kind of thinking that this might be the loud noise she's hearing. Because this bolt here, I'll just have to cut this bolt off. Because I mean, this seat pan, or floor pan here is all rotted out. And I don't have any, unfortunately, of this style to even be able to replace it. I don't have any used ones. So that, that kind of sucks. But uh, I'm going to let her know that this seat, the rear seat footrest floor pan thing whatever you want to call it is all rotted out and this bolt here if that's what's making the noise i'll just i can just cut that off that ain't no big deal but outside of that i mean the cart's really not too terrible i mean it's it, it's seen better days uh you know kids drive this thing so they beat the snot out of it and then they put it away soaking wet but um yeah so it's not that bad let's kind of jump into and let's get the service done on it first we'll go over do the full routine just get the oil changes and all that stuff and yeah, let's just get into it. All right, first things first. Gloves. I apologize if I sound a little nasally and sniffly today. It's that time of year where the pollen is, tree pollen is so high right now, and I'm doing my best to try to breathe. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do first is, actually, let me do this first. Let's take... Milwaukee blower. It's come in very handy, I tell you. Especially after washing a cart, you can blow all the water out and everything. It's pretty nice. I'm going to start here with spark plugs. See, that came off kind of easy. I bet you that needs to be pinched. Let's see what's going on. These and here's these. Ooh, okay. All right. 
Oh, okay. This ratchet's starting to fail on me, I think. See how these look. You know, we're going to do a compression test as well while we're at it because I'm going to have both plugs out. All right, so this is BPR2ES is our number. Um, that actually looks perfect. That's what a spark plug is supposed to look like. See that cocoa brown around the ceramic? Yeah, that spark plug's perfect. We don't even have to change it. I'm kind of thinking, though, that the uh, valves are out of adjustment. Because, I mean, it's been... Yeah, see this one, too. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. That is perfect. Like It's got a little bit of a rust brown to it. VPR 2 es So when I see plugs like that, I'm not ch I don't change them. Because I'd have to charge the customer for it. Get the good old compression tester here. Regardless of what the cylinder pressure is, I am changing the, or adjusting the valves, so I don't really care what the pressure says. I gotta get the seat off of here. It's like this engine runs pretty good on this cart too, so it's, it's pretty nice. Okay, key on. Let's watch this together, shall we? Oh, also neutral. The little trick for you here, let me show you. I don't know if anybody, you guys don't know about this. Can you see what I'm looking at here? See this little tang? When you put your cart in neutral and you pull this out, that's your neutral interlock. I don't know if you knew about that. I don't remember if I pointed that out in other videos, but I wanted to show you that because it's pretty neat. Okay, so key on full throttle, pedal to the floor. All right, so 90 PSI in that cylinder. I did notice it was a little hard starting when I went to pick it up. Come on. Okay. This in there, just give it a little twist. Put that in there. Full throttle. Oh, hold my hand on the. Hold on a second. Let's do that over. I had my hand on the relief valve. Okay, so about 130, 140 psi. So that cylinder is pretty good. So it's. It sounds like to me that it's just valves. Uh, she was complaining that it was a little hard starting. She thinks the kids are just beating the crap out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust the valves on it. Um, first thing I'm gonna do though, actually, is. I'm going to put these spark plugs back in um, because I'm not going to do a compression test after the fact just because I already know. Um, actually, you know what? Let me take that back because I know some of you are going to want to see what the before and after is. So you saw the before. We're at 90 PSI on this cylinder. I'm going to call this cylinder one, clutch side. Cylinder two is one, between one... Look at the gauge here. Yeah, it was about 140. So that wasn't too terrible. All right, so we'll move that out of the way. I smell propane. So I already know some of you are already going to bitch about this, but I don't care. This is how I do it. If you know your tool, you don't have to worry. I've never stripped out a screw doing this because I'm careful. This actually has a, uh, let's see, how do I turn this light on? See, there's a setting in here. I have it on two. So, and I give it, I don't, I can give it half, half of a, plus that thing's broke, half of a trigger, and it doesn't, you know, kind of chatters. I'm not really giving it really much power, so. Just make sure they're all backed out. My jack here keeps rolling on me for some reason. I hate this part of the garage floor. It's got a dip in it, right where the drain is. Okay, so we're gonna pull that off. We're gonna need our feeler gauge. You're gonna need a feeler gauge at four thousandths. On this engine, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter wrench. This is a non, the non-MCI engine. It's got the cast iron exhaust manifold. That's how you can tell. 
The MCI engine will have the exhaust manifold cast in aluminum as part of the head itself. And then we're also going to need a flathead screwdriver. All right, so now I take my little container here. I don't know if you guys see what I'm doing, hopefully. I can't see the camera screen because I'm at a different angle here, but I use one of these oil, these Pennzoil cork containers. I'll take this off, tip it, because there, there's passageways for the oil inside this valve cover. See the oil draining out? And then I'll put it right inside there, leave it on the gas tank. So, engine key is off. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll the engine over. Let me see if I can get you a little closer here. You can actually see what I'm doing inside. This is going to be a little tricky to show. Not really doing any fancy lighting this time around. I'll get back into that, I promise. I just got to bear with me here. The lighting's going to kind of suck for a little bit. Okay, so what we're looking for, I don't know if you can see this on here, but I'm going to try to get in a little closer. So you can see the cam. See, here's the cam right here. See that lobe? You want that pointing straight down and away from the uh, the rocker arm there. Let me suck up some of this oil here because it's going to make a mess. Wipe off our dirt. Wipe it off away from the opening so you don't push any dirt down in there. Okay, so you can see how that that lobe is pointing down and away now. I can, I can move that rocker arm, so that tells me that that valve is probably adjusted properly. Yeah, I can feel the slightest resistance sliding that in and out. So that's how I know that valve is good. Now we're going to go over to this one here. So we'll roll the engine back, and I, this rolls over really easily. So I'm thinking that one's really tight. I can just tell by the feel. Let's see. Yep, can't get the feeler gauge in there. So what you got to do then... Take your 10 millimeter, and you want to carefully, I'm trying not to hit the camera and knock anything over here, crack that locking screw, locking nut loose. Remember, cold engine, not a hot engine. I don't care what anybody tells you that's been working on engines a long time. The book for this motor says cold engine. So now we're going to back this off until I feel it release. Oh, that was significant. Okay, now I can get the feeler gauge under. Now I'm going to pull it, turn it tight clockwise until it, it drags. Okay, so it's just dragging right there. I'm going to leave the feeler gauge in. Now I'm going to take my 10 millimeter and I'm going to hold back on this screw a little bit. I actually have to tighten it down a little. There we go. I'm going to hold back on it, turning counterclock, holding back counterclockwise on the the flathead drive, screwdriver and tightening clockwise on the retaining bolt. Okay, and then there's my four thousandths gap. I can feel that really well, that's good. Now I'm gonna go over to this, and this is, um, these are the intake valves here, these two. And these two out here are the exhaust. It's always the intake valves that give me the hardest time. See, this is still rolling over, really. Oh, I have the spark plugs out. That's why it's rolling over so easy. I usually judge it based on... Yeah, see how tight that one is? That one I'm going there. I usually judge the compression after doing this based on how the resistance is of the engine, but I forgot I had the spark plugs out because we're going to retest the... We're going to retest this again anyway. So again, you got to pull back on this. Wow, this one's really tight. Why is this one so tight? Oh, it's not that tight. I just didn't have a good, good grip on it. I usually use a different screwdriver. This one, or a wrench. This one here is a little funky. Okay. And my normal screwdriver that I use for this is busted. Okay, so I'm going to hold that feeler gauge in there until it pops in. Yep, right there. There we go. And then I will, same thing. The uh, other valves are good. I, I'm, I'm going to assume. No, it's not good to assume, but I'm, gonna will, I'm willing to... Now, see, I tighten that up too far. I have to back this off again. All right. I have to hold back a little more, like that. 
pulled back a little more rather. Yeah, the... Oh, that's still a little too tight. What's going on here? You know, this these engines get old and there we go. That's better. So you saw how much I turned that screw where it uh, actually had quite a bit of well, quite a bit of a turn before it actually lessened up, and that one's perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now, at this time, I'm going to leave the valve cover off because I'm going to drain the oil. And I'm going to refill the engine through this with the valve cover off because it just fills that much quicker. Well, let me get my oil pan in place here. So what we're going to do on these, and that's what I really like about these Robin engines, is this oil filter system here. I'm actually going to the only thing I don't like is the way these brake cables run underneath the motor. Not a fan of this. Just because it's yeah, it's on the, always in the way. Now before you grab your forks and pit your torches and pitchforks here, again. I can't get that on. Hang on a second. I gotta get my smaller one. I use my drill on everything, so. And I've never heard anything doing that. This just makes it faster for me. But I've always done it this way. I know it sounds... It sounds worse than it actually is. Those aren't really that tight. I've done hundreds of parts this way. I have never stripped out a screw by doing that. So just know that. I know my tools. Do I recommend you do it that way? Nope. All right, let's get this all out here. Let that drain out. Ooh, that, that is low. The O-ring is stuck to the filter. Filter doesn't look all that bad. Trying to keep this brake line back while it drains so it doesn't get all that eh, doesn't matter i gotta let it go anyway see the filter don't look all too bad i don't even see any chunkies in it oh i do see a few let me get some brake clean so i'm gonna take the o-ring off of the filter because it's still good these are washable filters so you guys can wash them out I like to use brake cleaner to clean them. You could also put them in a parts washer. That's usually sometimes, sometimes I put them in a the parts washer. Okay. Clean that surface off, clean that off. I'm just gonna let it sit here and drain out. I'm actually gonna hit it with the air compressor. I don't know if you can see that, but I use the air compressor on it. All right, this O-ring is still good. Yeah, you could change it if you get one, or if you have one, but you don't necessarily have to. As long as they're not ripped, and they sit back in their hole, take some of that oil, it's dribbling out of there, put it on. Now, to remember, the way to remember that the way these go on is the flat face faces forward. See how these have like a, I'll get my big arm out of the way. See how they have like a trapezoid or an angle here and an angle here and this side's flat. Maybe right there. Flat forward. This is how I try to remember that. Well, I don't need to because I already know, but you know what I mean. All right, so I'm just gonna break clean these bolts real quick. Wow, it is windy out today. This is really hard to do with the camera in my way. So, just so you know. Okay, I'm going to get these close. And yes, I am going to put these back in with the impact. But I'm not going to reef them down. Again, before you start writing your comments about that, I do it like this all the time. Actually, this belt looks, now that I'm seeing it from down here, starter generator belt's got a nasty crack on it. I think we're going to just replace it. I see a bunch of them that are actually pretty deep. Look at that one. 
I didn't see that one before. There's another one up there. So we'll be changing that. Click. 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 Let me do this one one more time. Okay. Right. Now I'll just wipe off this residual oil that gets all over everything. And then clean that off. Brake clean, not carb cleaner. There we go. All right, let's go dump some oil in it. So we got a quart and a half of oil going in. I'm gonna pull the dipstick out. That way it'll give it, it'll be able to breathe as it's going down in, even though it could breathe through the PCV. And then just uh, start pouring. Could actually pour it in pretty fast here. And I like to spread the oil over everything. So if any crap does get in there, it'll wash it right down to the bottom and get immediately picked up by the filter and not be hanging around too much. Up top, there we go. All right, this is not exactly a clean room. Okay, there we go. Now, put the valve cover back on. I'm gonna leave my oil drain pan here because I'm not done with it yet. I still gotta take the fuel filter off. Okay. And again, like I said, I've never stripped out a screw doing this. If I feel it's not going in properly, I'll stop. All right, and because, because this is what it is as far as being plastic and all, I am going to hand tighten these. good I get them hand I usually get them drawn in pretty quick with the impact and then I'll get them tight with that okay now that we got oil in it and we've adjusted the valves while we have the spark plugs out let's do the compression test again so that's we're killing two birds with one stone here we got rid of the dirty oil we're, now we could do the compression test hands are a little slippery from the oil it's all right now remember this is cylinder we're calling cylinder one this one only had 90 psi so let's see where we're at this time key on Look at that. significantly better so we're like 145 on that one We should be pretty close to about the same on this one. Remember our exhaust valves were good. It was our intake valves that were wore out. Or that, or that are, well, yeah, they're wore out, but they're the ones that were loose. Hey, okay, ready? Okay, so a little bit of an improvement, you can see. A little close, 145 on both cylinders. That's pretty darn good if you ask me uh easy goes manual engine repair manual actually states that that is considered wore out and it's time to rebuild it um at that stage but you know 2004 cart nobody i don't really think anybody's going to want to pay to have this engine rebuilt and then i'll put the dipstick back in and uh, we'll see if it fires up no, actually, you know what? I'm going to change the fuel filter first because uh, that way I can run the engine, get it prime, get the fuel filter primed. That'll be good. Yeah, that's what we'll do. I'll just give these a little noogie. Okay. Hey, my hands are slippery because of the oil. A little noogie. Not reefed down tight. The dipstick back in. We'll check our oil level. Spot on. It's actually a little high because the cart's not level. But it's where I expect it to be, so 
Okay, now I'm going to change the fuel filter. So how I do this, eh, you guys have seen it a bunch of times. Let's see, when was the last? Yeah, so this is two years ago that I did this for. 4421. This is 41723. So it's a little over two years since the service. Um, I always try to remove the fuel filter from the tank side first. That way the crap inside the filter doesn't get sucked back into the tank when it siphons. And then just let it drain into my tank. Yeah, I splashed a little, but it ain't too bad. Okay, see, and then I check the fuel lines to see if they're spongy, and they are. Shove that on. This one feels good. And that's why I date my filters. You know, I've been doing that for a while. It's, it's a good idea to put the date on them. If your cart has an hour meter, you can put the hours on them. This one doesn't have an hour meter. Most of the newer ones do, though. Okay, there's fuel, oil. Uh, let's pop the air cleaner cover off and see what that looks like. I bet you that's probably um, going to be fun. Okay. Looks clean on this side. Oh, well, okay. So that's a bit gnarly. So if I always, my rule of thumb is with the filter, if I pull it and it's, it doesn't look like this, I mean, this is obviously going to be changed, but if I pull the filter off and it looks like kind of like this and I smack it on my hand and nothing comes out of it, it's still good. So if I do that and nothing comes out, I don't know if you saw that. Probably not. I don't know. Yeah, I smack it on your hand like this really hard. See how that dust is coming out and I'm barely touching it. So we're just going to change it. It's just better off changing it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go there. There you go, 417.23. It's more visible from this side. Now these filters, you can, I don't know if you noticed, but the this part has gotten a lot thicker on these and they've been a real pain in the ass. To get these filter covers. It's been a real pain in the ass to get these filter airbox covers back on. So what I've been doing is I've been taking a little bit of white lithium grease and just kind of like putting a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. I'll take it on my glove and I'll put it on both sides of this plastic part. So what this is basically going to do, and then I'll run it all along the bottom here. This will help the plastic bit slip past the filter itself, like so. There we go. And now it's it's just, I don't know, they decided to use a thicker plastic or rubber when they made them. I don't know what the hell they were thinking, but probably weren't. <laughs> there. But it does create a really nice tight seal. Okay, so now that we've got sparks good, Hook up our spark plugs. Yeah, that's see, that's a little loose. I'm gonna squeeze that a little bit. Our spark plugs are good. Our oil and filter our oil's change and filter is good. We clean that. I'm just gonna pinch the tongs inside or the tangs inside that. There we go. That's better. Fuel filter, air filter. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the engine until the fuel filter fills up. Yeah. Crank tires right up. Filters filled. I hope you saw that. I, I know it's kind of at the top of the view there. I hope you saw it fill. So that's now we're done with the main part of the engine service. Uh, so what we're going to do is while we're here, we're going to hook up the meter to the battery and we're going to check the charging system and the battery condition. So I use this solar battery charger. Now this is meant for cars and trucks, but it works really good on this. So we're going to go negative, positive. And then once it's hooked up, it boots up. 12.7 volts. We're going to have a surface charge on the battery because we've been running it. 
So what we're going to look for is our cold cranking amps at 32, so 560. I'm going to go to a battery test. Flooded battery, cranking amps, 560, above 32, yes, testing. Now what this is going to do, it's going to test the internal resistance and state of charge of the battery. And it's, re it's reporting bad and replaced, but obviously the battery is starting the cart and it's running. Um, I will advise the customer and let them know that they're only getting 251 cranking amps, cold cranking amps out of the battery. And we'll see what they want to do. If they want me to replace the battery, I will. If not, we'll just let it ride. All right, so now we're going to do, we're not going to print. We don't really need to. Uh, we're going to go to the system test. This is a little tricky with this machine on golf carts because they're, they don't have a large inrush current requirement for the starter because it is, you know, it, it's the way it's set up. It doesn't just, it, it just doesn't pull enough cranking amps or amperage. Yeah, what am I trying to say? It doesn't pull enough power out of the battery to uh, get this thing to register, but let's try. Turn off load, start engine. <laughs> So that actually works, surprisingly. Trying to get a half throttle. We now know that our charging system is functioning correctly, but we have a battery testing bad. And again, I'm not going to print because we don't really need to. So that's the battery and charging system test that I do. So there's that. Now I do have to take these apart and clean them because they're a little funky. Um, and the battery is a little loose. Oh, it's, it's anchored in there. All right, so let me, uh, let me do that. Let me get my stuff ready right together for this and we'll get this clean. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. This is just half inch. Now, if somebody is going to ask me, what would I do? Would I change this battery? Uh, if it was my own cart, I probably would wait until it starts to give me problems. Um, at this point in time, it's not really causing any major issues. Oh, I hate these things. Okay, so negative is disconnected now. We can get in here and unhook the positive. Uh, but I always recommend if your battery is getting really weak, uh, I would change it because what it's going to start doing, I don't know. See, I, I'm contradicting myself here a little bit, but in all honesty, I really would recommend changing the battery if it's this bad because what it's going to start doing is putting extra strain on the voltage regulator and the starter generator, and that's only going to just create more issues down the road. It's better to change the battery out now than wait. Um... So that way, you know, you're not making the start the voltage regulator work harder and the starter generator work harder. Uh, it's it's not going to have as much of an effect on the starter generator as it would the voltage regulator. But you know, it's really what it comes down to. It's, it's not this isn't my cart, but I'm just going to give her my recommendation. Either way, though, I am going to take the time to clean all this stuff here because these are not too bad. But I'm going to hit them really quick with a whiz wheel on the thingy yeah let's do that okay so i have this brush that i have on the end of my drill i'll use to you don't have to go nuts with these they're not corroded they're actually still pretty clean so i'm not overly concerned i just want to get the get the crusties off and then i'll get the ground I don't feel like getting the air wheel out, so I'm just using the drill. Okay. And then for the battery itself, I only clean the surfaces that are in contact with battery terminals. Instead of cables, rather. 
don't have to clean the whole thing because you're not in contact with it, so there's no point. Just had to clean the side there. So it, on this type of battery, it's just these faces you have to worry about. And again, I'm going to put this back together just so I can move the cart around. Uh, and I'm going to, after I let the customer know about the battery condition, see what they want to do. If they decide to have the battery changed out, I will go ahead and change out the battery. See, that's clean. Look at that. That's really I'm clean this side though. Oh, here my something's creaking. Okay, and we'll clean the negative. Just because it's here. It's for the lights. That's all that does. There's no turn signal or horn on this. It's just a light, basic light kit. And then we'll hook everything back up like it was. And again, it's nothing to take everything apart to move it to, to redo. Or uh, it's nothing to take this out to change the battery. So I'm not worried about any of that. I just need to be able to move the cart out of the shop if they decide to have the battery changed. This way I don't have to push it around and all that fun jazz. It'll just be easy peasy. And then I will... And if they don't want the battery changed, it's ready to rock and roll. And I'm not putting any terminal protectant on this yet, not until I talk to the customer because I don't really want to deal with that nonsense. And then I will zip tie all these cables up before, you know, right now, I'm like I said, I don't know what they're going to want to do with this. So I want to get that figured out first, but I got to do the belt too. So uh, as of right now, um, let's take a look at the brakes. Two nine sixteenths wrenches to get this off. So what you got to do, there's a jam nut. I should have cart this off. Don't. Ugh, that one's not coming off. Let's try that again. Let's try it again. Oh shit! Holy shit! That is tight. Pardon my language. There we go. Okay. Usually, once you crack these loose, you should. Move this light over here. Still don't know if you can see what I'm doing. You should be able to loosen the uh the nuts here at least the jam nut can't get the uh you get this one here to go up all the way see i i do like this method of belt tensioning on the easy goes um yamaha at least the g16 um Um, well, actually, the Yamaha, yeah, the G16 and up, the Yamaha has a 10 millimeter, well, I think it's an M, I don't remember. Anyway, so once you get those loose enough, just pull up on the belt, it should, yeah, there we go, it should loosen this up enough. Okay, we gotta go a little more. It should pivot the starter generator towards the, uh, there we go, now it's really loose. Must be a... A little bit of crap or something on the threads. Then if you pull it up, it should rotate the starter generator towards the engine where you can just roll the belt off. Um, I like to go towards the engine. And then once it's off, uh, without taking the drive belt off, let's see if it'll work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Nope, I'm going to take the drive belt off. Which isn't a big deal because it's... Oops, I'm getting this one caught in there. All right, so don't do what I just did. Just, yeah, there we go. I got the generator belt caught in this now. Like a fool. There we go. Okay, take the drive belt out of the way. Uh, we're going to inspect it while we have it off. But you can see here, let me show you the, show you the cracks I was telling you about here. See this one here. 
This one, what the hell is squeaking on this? This thing was ready to snap, so it's good thing we're changing. There's quite a few of them on here that are like that. What is all of the oil can? And then, you know, I'll let the customer know about the belts. At least the generator belt we know is bad, so we'll put the new one on here in a second. So what we'll like, what we look for is the wear, the thickness of this belt, which this one is not bad, and I dipped it in oil. Great. When I took it off, it landed on the oil pan. Um, Brake cleaner, we'll take that off, no problem, not to worry. But what I like to look for is I'll look between the splines and I'll look for checking or cracks or splits. Uh, this has none of that, so that belt is still, we're gonna reuse it. It's still good. We'll put the generator belt back on here and I'll wrap it onto the generator, starter generator, and then we'll roll it on. See, that's already tight as it is. You can see how that would wore out. There is two belt numbers that you can use. I like this BLT0018 is the belt number I'll use generally on these TXTs uh, because it's a little bit smaller and there's a lot more room for adjustment on them. So as they get stretched, you can tighten them up a little easier. I think 002. BLT0021, I believe, is the other one. Don't quote me on that. All right, and then we'll just tighten those up. They're jammed tight. Put the drive belt back on. I don't see the need to change it, so we're not going to. It's still riding where it's supposed to. Okay, that's that's pretty straightforward. Let's roll this back a little bit. And you can see there, I put the date right by the part number. So that way I know, the customer knows when it was changed, as long as that stays there, which it usually doesn't, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, with the exception of the battery, which we're going to still have to contact the customer on, uh, we're pretty much done under the seat. So what I'm going to end up doing now is I'm going to actually put the uh, seat back on just so I know that we're done under here. All right, so now we're down under here looking at the brakes oh I already see what the problem is I don't know if you guys can see that see how this is not pivoting that's causing the brakes to be stuck on a little bit oops see right here this spring assembly is supposed to pivot and it's not see how it's stuck all right so that's a problem I bet you that's not gonna come apart I hate, to, I hate like hell to do it, but we're going to have to. I'm going to have to take the bolt out here uh, so I just can have easier access to the pin here and see if I can get that apart. If I can get this all apart and get it clean, we might be in luck. Um, as you can see, even... Oh, wait, actually, I think we just freed it up. Yeah. Okay, so it's not going to be as difficult to get apart as I originally thought, but it does need to be taken apart and cleaned. So we'll get a 916 and a 17 millimeter or three quarters or yeah, three quarters, not 19 millimeter. No, 916 for this side. Just want to see. Okay. Yeah. This will come apart easy. The big one here. which I believe is, I believe it's three quarters. I'll have to double check. This nine sixteenths comes out pretty easily. Now what I'll do is I usually like to get it out as far as I can, turn it all the way out. And then thread it back on. Cause we're gonna, I'm gonna have to hit this with a hammer to try and at least get this to move. Um, and typically what I'll do is when I'm trying to knock this bolt out, which it can be a real bear to get out. I'll uh, 
I'll use an old giant nail. Oh, see, actually, look at how nice and smooth that is. That's actually coming out easily. I think I've had this apart before, is probably why. Usually when I take these apart, I, yeah, look at that. That's tapping, tapping right out. I don't even think I'm gonna have a problem getting this out of here, which is good. I lubed the hell out of these things when I put them back together. Um, I'll use either fluid film or some other film oil of some sort of grease. I'm sure I take my 916s up in there. Yeah, look at that. See, that's that's coming apart easily. I'm gonna actually, now that I've gotten that in there, let's see if I can. I like to push on it with the 916s and then I kind of like do this. Yeah, see? I wonder if I can pull it out by hand now. No, not quite. Let's see. It's not going to fight me, with it, is what I'm trying to say. So what I'll end up using is... I have this drift that I made. Put my glasses on here so I don't get blasted in the face with dirt. Because all the dirt on the cart now is going to fall off. And just tap it out gently. Normally, they, they don't normally come out that easily. It's a little dry, so I'll clean it up and put some lube on it before I put it back together. But this is a special bolt. You can get them from EasyGo. I don't know the part number. But it is for the brake pedal assembly. So it's going to be in the brake group. Um, and it's it's the shaft of the bolt is 9 16 where this is like a 5 8 16 5 8 16 thread. And then, just watch the spring. It'll pop down, all right? See, that thing's not pivoting, so it's... There we go. Now you take the spring off. They're not really that difficult to put back in, so don't worry if you have to do this. I'm gonna tip that back like that, so there we go. See, now we have access to all of this. Um, these bushings are in rough shape, but they're not busted, so we're not gonna worry about them. I am going to uh, lubricate this before we put it back together, but I gotta get this apart first. I gotta see what I need to do to do that. Um, it's gonna be a little tricky because I have to get underneath here to. All right, so there's a cotter pin, and then I gotta get this pin out. Let me see if I can get that cotter pin out. Just because I moved you doesn't mean you can see what I'm doing. So hopefully you can see. I can't see the screen. Let's see if we can... I have to try to get this out now. I hope it's going to come out. Oh, it's going to break. Which, that's fine too. It's all crusty. Very, very crusty. Everything's crusty under here. Okay, so that broke. That broke again. I'm gonna do my best here to... All right, so I'm basically just cutting it now. So let me see if I can break it off at the surface and then I can try to... I don't have cutting torches anymore, so I can't heat this up. And give it some caveman ingenuity. Oh, that actually, see that loosened it up. Look at that. Well, I have to get it out now because I broke the. So that's all it needed. <laughs> Probably all I needed to do was look at, see it. Look at how that's working perfectly now. Well, it's not really the right way to do it. I have to take it apart. Okay, let me see if I can. I'm going to try to just brute force it out here. Hopefully. I can't get the cotter pin out. I might have to drill it out, actually. See, now this is all... All the crusties are falling off, see? So this is... This is fine now because it's rotating. 
right. Okay. Let me think for a second. I think I'm gonna just take this, uh, Tighten that up there. So what I'm gonna have to do is, okay. All right, so I'm sorry guys, I couldn't take you along for that escapade. That was not gonna happen. So, now, I need to get the break. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinstall the brake pedal. Uh, I have to replace that clevis pin because uh, the pin itself is no good. So I got another one here. It's a, it's a used one, but it's it's in better, far better shape than what that other one was. So we'll get this pedal in place. Uh, let me go clean up this bolt. I'm going to go clean this bolt up on the uh, whiz wheel. And by whiz wheel, I mean putting it in the end of the, put this in the truck, the chuck of the drill, not tight, just enough so you, it'll grab it and then spin it and then clean it with some scour pad. All right. So what we're going to use is we're going to use some good old fluid film. Let's see how dirty that is in there. Not bad. So I'll put some fluid film in there. Fluid film's good stuff. I use it on everything lately. Um, I'm going to now reattach my brake lines. Now that I have you guys in my way. I'll slip you back here a little bit. So we'll put these back in here. I'll put the little rubber things in when I'm done. Alright, like so. And this is just a spring assembly for this. And then I have to put this in here. This. Right. And you. Ow, that was my finger. It's not lining up, that's why. What the hell's going on here? Oh, duh. Okay. This pin's a little, there we go, a little tight. And then I will, once I put this all back together, we'll put fluid film on it because I don't want to, um, there. I don't, I just don't want to get it all over my hands right now while I'm trying to fight with springs and stuff. There we go. Okay. Now you got to fight with the brake pedal. Kind of. It's not too bad. This isn't really that difficult of a job. Once you get this bolt out, which by itself, I mean, see how easy that went in now? Because it's clean and lubricated. Once you get all that done, it's not too bad. There. And I, have to, I still have to move it around a little. Some fluid film came out, and I'll spray all this down with fluid film. It actually, oops, see the brake line came off already. Which, no big deal, I can get that back on there. I have to get this to line up a little better. Now this bolt shoulder will go all the way through this here. Um, so it might take a little bit of getting it to fin finagle there. There it goes. Okay. Gotta have your brake pedal moving smoothly, guys. This, these things get... Th this 
I'm not crazy about this setup here. Um, when you tighten this down tight, it will bottom out on that bolt like that. And you don't have to go, see, and that moves nice and freely now like it's supposed to. Now, of course, I have to fight with this brake cable here and get it on because it came off on me like a dingus. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get that on there. Ah, oh, really? <laughs> well, you know what? I have to loosen these up anyway because that is out of adjustment. So, our little wire brush here. We've got to clean these threads off. As best as you can, so when you're uh, when you back this out, it'll just come out nice and smooth. It won't bind on any of the crap that's in there. Of course, it's all spinning. Why not? I'm gonna try to grab with this. There we go. Just have to get it loose. I don't have to go all the way out with it. It just has to come back far enough so that I can hook that brake cable on there. And this is a nylock nut, so it'll... I know, it'll probably like right on top of it, right? All blurry and everything. Let's see. Told you, camera angles are going to suck for a little bit. Just bear with me. Lighting's going to suck too. So that's pretty much not spinning now. Right. And then this this one here should just that one should just open up. It's either five eighths or eleven sixteenths. It's five eighths. Okay, that's still binding. Right, so let's see. Once I crack it loose, it should be good. Yeah, there we go. Nice and loose. We'll put this on here. Back this one up. Now we can undo it by hand. All right. Now I can reattach our brake cable. Okay. Brake pedal is still moving freely. The brake cables are all the way back because when I adjust the brakes out, I will tighten this up later because I got to pull the back tire so I can adjust the brakes. But you need this to be loose. So that way you're getting your full motion of the uh, the stuff. You know what I mean. The full motion of the um, brake pedal and brake cable and the shoes are moving. Everything's got to move in concert. It's a very important thing. I don't know. I bet you how much I'm not going to get this. Oh, look at that. Rip the nipple thingy right off. That's why I didn't want to take these out. But we'll get them back in. There. There's one. Just got to massage them a little bit. Like that little nipple thing that's on the end is useless. The little nipple thing. Okay. So I get it like that and then just kind of pull it back like that. There. Okay. All right. So that's back together. This is working. This is good. We're going to lubricate that even though it doesn't really need it. All the crap is falling on my face. See, even with no tension on this, that spring there should be the only thing that's needed to return this pedal to full pedal. I still have to put a cotter pin in that, and I did not forget. I'm going to do that right now. If I can pick it up. Now... I'm going to do exactly the opposite of what I said I wanted to do before, which was do this so before I fluid filmed everything, because I don't have, I'll just wipe it off. I don't have gloves on, and I'm going to get fluid film all over my damn hands. Is that going to fit in there? It is. And then I'll rotate this, or, yeah, I bend that over. Rotate, if that'll fall in. 
does. Now I can, I'm trying to get the cotter pin so it's facing me because I didn't put it together while I had it apart or had it out. And then I'll take it and bend it straight up and then I'll hit it up against the thing there. Perfect. Okay, so that's done. Reapplying oil, reapplying oil, complete. Right. Yeah, and I know dirt and dust and crap is going to get in there, but at least it's not going to... Not that that matters. It's not going to um, get seized up because of rust anymore. Okay. All right. Brake pedal doesn't lock either because it's not set correctly. Like I said, we got to keep these loose. That's one thing a lot of people forget to do is loosen these up when they're adjusting their brakes, or they'll just tighten this up when they're adjusting their brakes, thinking that this is the right adjustment. But I like to back this out. If it's all rusted up and you know ruined, I won't touch it because there's no way in hell it's going to come loose unless the brake shoes are wore out totally. And the only way to get the drum back on, even at the, the you know the slowest or uh, tightest setting, is by adjusting this. But by that time, this assembly here would probably need to be replaced anyway. And you can get just the spring assembly with this part and all the hardware and everything. But if you clean it and you fluid film it, you should be good. Okay, so now we got to pull the back tires off and adjust the brakes. <laughs> Now remember, easy goes have a tendency to do stupid things, right? Okay, so with easy goes, the drum is the hub. Let's bring over the light. Maybe this will help. I don't know, we'll see. I don't know what you guys are gonna be able to see and what you can't see here. Hang on. Uh, so when. Adjusting the brakes, don't take the drum off. Um, just leave the drum on. Well, these aren't even tight. Leave the drum on. I mean, unless you have to take the drum off because the splines are shot. See how loose that is? And the cart is in neutral. Uh, now here's what I do. Unless you're doing a brake job, like where you're taking the drums off to replace the pads, you don't have to get all crazy and nuts with it. All right, so what I'll do is I'll take this, just tap the drum, try not to breathe any of that brake dust in. See how it's centered? The drum, the, the pads aren't rubbing the rotor anymore or the drum anymore. Now what you gotta do is you gotta get, you gotta find, okay, so this is a bottom feeding cable, so the adjuster is gonna be on the front here. Or the back. Where is it? Why can't I see it? Where the hell is the adjuster wheel? Oh, there it is. It's just so dirty in there, I can't see it. And what did I do with my screwdriver? Here it is. So there's a, there's a little star wheel in there. And what you want to do is you want to click it and tighten it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually crank that star wheel out so the brake drum is tight. And then I'll go around and I'll tap it again and so just so it's dragging. And then that's usually where I leave it. Let's see here. One. I'm going to have to turn it quite a bit, so let me put the light down. See if I put the light. No, that ain't going to help. If I put it back here, I can't see anything anyway, so that's, you're going to see as much as me. I can't see it. This light. I know I'm probably blocking what you. There we go. And I, I can see it, how I can feel a dragon already. So now, one, two. And now it's not dragging as much. Try not to breathe that crap in, too. Should probably have a longer screwdriver. Still not tight yet. 
Okay. So the drum's now getting tight. Now, not, you're not hitting this hard. You're just hitting it enough to help center the, the brake pads. Now, here it's dragging, and I can feel the resistance. So I'm going to pretty much go one more click here. Let's see. It. Hold on. i got to get my head in your way. Okay. Now it's tight. So that's where I'm going to leave this one. I'm going to tap it again. I go all the way around, hit it four times. See, I can still go a little more, actually. And there's still a lot of... Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to kind of leave that right where it's at. One more click, okay. So just wanted to get, the, I had to make sure the, uh, the paddle in there was, okay, so now that's tight. I'm going to, again, just tap the drum gently. Don't go whaling on it. Just, now I can move that easily right there. Now we're going to put the wheel back on. I'm going to do this on the other side, and then we're going to go back under the cart and make our adjustments, if any, under there. I don't think so. I don't think we're going to need to, though. I think under there is going to be pretty, pretty close to where it needs to be. But once you get the drums tight, then you can work on getting your cable slack taken up. But you don't want to take too much slack out to where it's pulling the cables. You just want to take up the slack. And then when you press the pedal down, you want it to be, you want the brakes to grab evenly on both sides. And then make sure when it locks, it stays locked. If it doesn't stay locked and it's tight, uh, it's also, it could be other things. And also make sure the shoulder, the taper on the acorn nut faces the wheel. I've seen so many people put them on backwards where they have the taper facing, facing out. And the wheel doesn't center and they're wondering why there's a wobble when they're driving. And that's not that, not that tight either. Yeah, see now it, there's a lot of resistance. That's what we want. And I can still get to the valve stem when I go to check the air tires. Or the air on the air tire pressure. Tire pressure. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm gonna go do the other side and then we'll get under under the cart and adjust that. So both all of the uh, all the brakes are adjusted now. My cables are where they're supposed to be. Okay. So now what I gotta do is I have to make sure they're all the way in. Okay, and now I know once I press the pedal down, now I see how far in I have to go with this. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll just keep hitting, hitting the brake pedal until I get it. A little bit of slack. The cables are not coming out yet, they're just... I'm just kind of, okay, brakes are applied right there. Okay, so I can go a little more. There we go. Okay, and they all go all the way in like they're supposed to. Oops, I need the half inch. And now we can run in the jam nut and then we'll lock everything down and then the brakes are done. So that ended up being a much bigger job than something like this would normally would be. See, I can normally adjust the brakes in a, about half hour, 20 minutes to a half hour. But when filming, it takes obviously longer because I'm trying to explain what I'm doing. Okay. Then I will take my 5 eighths because it can fit in there too. Let's go in reverse and tighten. Just jam them up like that. There we go. Brake pedal is firm and where it's supposed to be. And now, I'll just kind of goober that all over everything underneath the cart. Perfect. Just kind of wipe up some of them goobers. Okay. And then I'll wipe the lens of my flashlight with it so that way everything's dirty. Okay, so that's brakes done. That's great. Okay, so now the only thing left to do is... Just have to grease the front end, really. 
I'm not going to show that. I mean, just three pumps in each tie rod end. Um, okay, and that's pretty much it on this one, guys. All right, guys, so that is basically going to conclude it for this one here. Uh, I did all the other stuff, the little minor things off camera. I checked the lights. They all work. Inflated all the tires to about 18 PSI. Uh, they're actually pretty good, surprisingly, for it sitting all winter and everything. But, uh, yeah, so this one's done. I'm still waiting to hear from the customer about the battery, so I'm not really sure what to do with that yet. You know, we'll just kind of wait and see. I'll wait till I hear from them and then take it from that point. I should hear from them by the end of today, probably. But, um, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. So thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And, again, thank you guys be for being patient with me. I know it's been a long a uh, long time since I had a video. I think it was like last September, but I uh, just want to say I do appreciate you hanging around and, you know, subscribing to the channel and all that fun stuff. And then uh, just stay tuned for more updates and hopefully we'll be able to bring some more golf cart videos to you on a more regular basis. Do my best. Uh, any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video.